natural disasters, all too real, occurring all too often. Getting medical aid and services to those who need it the most, as soon as possible, is always the goal. LifeWave and its members have done their part, whether providing financial aid to relief agencies or patches for stress, pain, lack of sleep, more energy for victims and relief workers. But can we do more? David Schmidt, our founder, CEO, and inventor of LifeWave's amazing products and other technologies, has always been committed to doing what he can to help those in need, especially during natural disasters. You know, you think about the humanitarian efforts we've done over the last 10, 12, 15 years, really since you started LifeWave. You've always had a heart for uh, whether it's called giving back or helping others or whatever, no matter the country, no matter the situation, these natural disasters that occur. Give us a sense of how you would characterize what LifeWave's done uh, over these last 15, 18 years. Yeah, Jim, I think it's good to start at the beginning. So when you're starting a company and you're thinking about taking a new technology, getting it off the ground, you're not really thinking about giving back, you know, at that moment. Uh, you're focused on setting up your research studies, uh, proving out what you have, setting up the manufacturing, looking at how to market, and you get really caught up in that and driving the market, and then all of a sudden, you know, you find yourself in the position that we were in. Our first month of sales in business, we did $500,000 in sales, in our first year, we did $17 million in sales. So that was an extraordinary success out of the gate. And then uh, what happened at the beginning of all this is that we did a conference in Las Vegas and it was a hugely successful conference. We had almost 2000 people there for our very first one. We had 40 speakers that came in, professional athletes, professional coaches, Olympic coaches, and a fellow by the name of Thomas Burke approached me and said, you know, this is so phenomenal. I'm so proud to be a member of this company. Uh, as you know, there was just a hurricane off the coast of Florida. Have you thought about starting a program to give back? And it was at that minute I realized that when a company becomes successful, you have an obligation to help those in need and give back to those that are less fortunate. Uh, so we raised, I think it was $50,000. Uh, in relief effort for the Red Cross at that very first event. And uh, that's what kicked off our effort to be in this program of giving back to others. And there always has been member involvement, right? I mean, regionally sometimes, they're the ones pulling LifeWave into the area because they're in the middle of a tragedy, right? The members that we have in our community globally are absolutely extraordinary people. They have always been there to help those in need. Uh, so we had a situation in Australia where there were the bushfires and there were LifeWave members that were there to give back and provide financial assistance, patch people, provide medical aid. Uh, we've had uh, victims of earthquakes uh, in Indonesia, earthquake in Italy, uh, of course, multiple hurricanes, and LifeWave members have always been there personally to provide medical aid and assistance. And recently we had those floods in Germany and in Japan, remember, kind of almost back to back over a period of six, eight months. There's always something happening where LifeWave wants to step up, right? Usually what happens is there'll be some type of natural disaster, something will happen, and LifeWave members will respond immediately and say, hey, I'm trying to help out with this situation. Can the company get involved and provide some kind of assistance? So in the case of the flood in Germany, we responded right away with a donation to the Red Cross. We sent patches out to members so they could be there to help people with relief of pain, coping with the stress and helping with uh, sleep. So this has been an effort that has been driven both from the company and from the member community. But you've mentioned from time to time some level of frustration that it, sometimes it takes weeks just because that's the way the administrative side of getting a check to somebody or actually where do we send the patches and who's going to be there to take them. You know, this whole dynamic of logistics and getting what you want to give into the theater where there's a problem. That's been frustrating for you, hasn't it been? It has been, you know, let's take the situation that just happened in the Ukraine and there was this global outpouring 
of what was going on with the refugees, right? So the war is a, is a terrible thing, and we have uh, families that are having to retreat into Romania, into Poland. And uh, the first thing that we did as a response was we donated money to the Red Cross to provide medical aid. We donated money to UNICEF uh, to specifically go to the children that were affected by this. Uh, we donated uh, supplies and patches to our members in Poland and Romania. Uh, the problem, that's all a great thing, but the problem with it is that it took weeks to get all of these things arranged. And so the frustrating part uh, for me is that these are people that need help now, not in a couple of weeks, they need help now. And so it was these type of incidents where I began to think that I would like to have the capability to provide medical aid, uh, provide relief effort to people within a 24 hour period. And so the question was, how could we do that? Uh, could we apply <clears throat> Uh, some things that we do really well, like innovation uh, and product development, could we put those skills to use and develop a system where we could take matters into our own hand and within 24 hours provide the relief that people need? Well, that's interesting. So you started to apply your technical awareness, your technology awareness, and so, so how do you begin? Yeah, so actually uh, this began with my son. So um, like a lot of young men, he was uncertain about the direction that he wanted to go in in life. And he had tried college and it really wasn't for him. So I had to sit and pray over it and think about, you know, what is my son really engaged in and that's gonna get him excited. And then the idea came to me, as fate would have it. Before LifeWave, I was developing emergency equipment for the Navy. And uh, one of the things that I specialized in was power generation. So I was developing new batteries, new fuel cells, and in particular, a uh, new type of turbine engine that didn't have blades, uh, that worked with a novel combustion system and could provide power in an emergency on a submarine. So this was uh, something that myself and my team uh, were doing back in the 90s. Mm. So I approached my son and said, Matt, I have this idea of a project that you and I could work on together. And here's what would be involved. And he immediately got excited about it. And he decided to drop everything else that he was doing. And he moved back to Florida where I am now. And he came to work for me and we got started on this project. And it started as something that we were gonna do as father son. Uh, but then as we began to innovate and develop, it became really obvious to me that we were doing something cutting edge this was going to be much, much bigger than a simple, uh, you know, project or hobby, and that we could help an enormous number of people if we applied uh, what we were learning and doing uh, to this project. So it, it started out pretty humble and simple, and uh, it developed into something which I think today is incredibly extraordinary.